So it's great to be here and to have the opportunity to talk to you about uh, developments in spatial technologies and how they relate to forest management. Without a doubt, the space and spatial industries are critical to the future of Australia's economy. Our resilience in terms of response to bushfire, flood, the impact of climate change, recovery from COVID, are all fundamentally related to the growth in both of these sectors. The synergies between space and spatial and the industries to more closely integrate and generate growth are therefore becoming increasingly significant. Organizations like the SmartSat CRC, the Space Agency, Geosciences Australia, their R&D programs to accelerate innovation and their associate productivity gains for Australia are really critical today. In this presentation, I would like to highlight a few of the key emergent developments in the spatial domain that support and build our resiliency and productivity gains in an unprecedented manner. In particular, I would like to focus on the efforts to develop the first Australian space-based augmentation system designed to enhance the positioning accuracy and positioning infrastructure for Australia. Secondly, Earth observation systems as a driver for developing more sensitive, timely and relevant measures for bushfire surveillance and management, as well as water quality assessment and monitoring. The real challenge here is to develop the tools and technologies that identify the spatial technologies and their associate enabling developments to rapidly drive activities into achieving new capabilities, solutions and opportunities across key Australian sectors. If we look at the space-based augmentation system that Australia is developing, the SouthPan system, this SBAS is designed to take our positioning accuracy levels to unprecedented levels. The value in terms of economic value of achieving this has been quoted at about $7.6 billion over a 30-year period. And what this allows us to do is to take the fundamental positioning accuracy known to us by satellite positioning of around 5 to 10 metres to a level of about 10 centimetres. The benefits of SBAS and having an SBAS capability as a sovereign capability for Australia include wider coverage of this positioning capability, enhanced accuracy, trust in our positioning capability, reduced commercial costs and infrastructure investment. GPS is a known positioning technology. It's one of the first global positioning systems that we've been aware of. But now we have this era of multi-GNSS. We have systems that come from Russia, the GLONASS system. We have Galileo, which is the European system. We have the Indian regional nav navigation satellite systems. And all of these systems are contributing to a broader coverage and availability of satellite positioning. But fundamentally, uncorrected, all of these systems really will only give us a positioning accuracy of the order of about 5 to 10 metres. SBAS are also not new. They've been around covering various regions of the world for, for many years now. And what we have decided is to create an investment in Australia that allows us to leverage the benefits of having these SBAS solutions to enhance our own positioning capability. So by allowing ground-based GNSS receivers to collect satellite measurements, processing those measurements, we are able to generate corrections that are then transmitted to users across key industry sectors. And these corrections are what enable us to position ourselves to that higher sub-meter or centimeter level position in accuracy. And the benefits to society are that we have these economic benefits across many sectors. For agriculture, for example, it's about 2.2 billion. But a really important component of one of the benefits is that we also get this, this greater integrity. We're able to trust the information that underpin our key critical sectors of society with positioning data that is inherently more trustworthy. If we move to the area of Earth observation for fire management, satellite-based Earth observation systems support a range of emergency management activities. New satellite imagery offer opportunities to leverage and develop Australia's space industry 
to provide new capabilities, including future platform sensors, analytics, security, and access to data. Here in this chart, we can see that in the three phases related to fire occurrence, the pre-fire stage, the during fire phase, and the post-fire recovery stage, we have activities that rely not just only on Earth observation data from satellite, but from a range of sensing capabilities that span space to terrestrial. And these multiple sources that layer between space and the terrestrial systems are really important in understanding how we achieve solutions for each of these phases. If we take here an example where we're trying to deliver continuous, timely, reliable, and accurate detection and surveillance of fire activity, what we want to do is leverage all of these developments. We want to take all the available data and look at what is possible. An example here is the Himawari 8 data, launched in the late 2015 through the Japanese Meteorological Agency. We have the capability in Australia to have data every 10 minutes. And we're talking about when we're doing all spectral bands every 10 minutes, full disk observations. We're talking about a lot of data of the order of about 300 gigabytes of data. So we have a lot of data, but we have a lot of frequency of observations that have the real potential to support continuous real-time satellite monitoring of active fires over Australia. And these are some results from some algorithms developed by a team working out at RMIT University, where what they were interested in doing during the, the, the tragic black fire, summer fires of 2019-2020 is to look at the ability of the Himawari 8 data to enable much faster detection of fires and clusters of fires than traditional means could do. And so we see that what they were proving is that their ability to detect was actually faster than even things like emergency calls to triple zero. And this algorithm is, is driving forward the challenge that we now have a lot of sensors, a lot of algorithms, a lot of data that is available to us in terms of Earth observations to generate these fire products to support better management. So what we need to do is how do we decide which product is most appropriate for the decision that we want to make? The AquaWatch program of work is also incredibly significant in understanding the potential value of Earth observation. AquaWatch is a system that's being proposed to measure and assess and monitor our water quality across the continent of Australia. It's a massive project. It connects us in with not just the space end of the problem, it connects us in with the ground segment as well. So again, another instance of where we're looking at a problem where we not only have one source of data, but we have multiple sources of data to give us some sort of decision superiority. And so the mission focus for water quality is, is driven by the impact that this work is designed to achieve. It's a collaborative program of work between the SmartSat CRC and CSIRO. And it's important because it is effect driven. We want to use the thing that we want to measure. We want to know and detect anomalies in our water quality. We want to improve the management of this resource. And we want to reduce the impact of contaminants and algae on the environment and people. So the AquaWatch component technologies consist of Earth observation data. So we want to use custom satellite information to help us achieve better sensors and signals for doing this water quality. We want to develop a dense in-situ ground sensor network that will augment this space-based capability. We want to have an Internet of Things, the IoT, data relay system, so we can communicate this more broadly to the decision-making personnel. And what we want to communicate is not just the measures of metrics. We want to communicate the uncertainty in all of this information as well. And in doing this, by, by making measures and communicating uncertainty, by fusing our information sets, we're able to achieve a, a better solution. So a continuous focus on end-to-end -end systems. 
So we want to build the whole ecosystem. We want to generate the outputs and the personnel to service this. And we want to enhance all components to achieve a better decision-making process. So in conclusion, it is clear to see that despite all the, the developments in spatial technologies, the interaction between space and spatial requires a coordinated strategic approach to the integration of Australia's space and spatial sectors if we are really going to secure and enhance our resilience, security, and overall well-being. Thank you very much.